Hey folks, John with Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. Now, you may have noticed my background has changed a little bit. Well, that's because my studio is actually over there. But today, I had a customer that brought in an interesting item uh, for an upgrade she wanted to do. And uh, you know me, I'm always about uh, changing it, modding it, and making it better. So we're going to go ahead and do this right here for you. So just hold on one second, and I'll show you what we're doing today. Here we go again. Alright guys, so here's the drill. Customer brought in this cool product. Uh, it's actually, uh, from what I understand, it's going to be a Christmas present for um, uh, one of her kids or grandkids or something along those lines. And uh, it in itself was kind of cool, but we decided to make it even cooler. So check this out. Customer brings in this Arcade 1UP. Now I'm pretty sure all of you guys have probably seen these things. Um, this is actually the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles edition. And as you can see, and I'm going to lean this up here a little bit. Now, I have Stumpy running. I know that the, uh, the video is not going to be 100% on this just because of the funky angle that we've got going here. But, as you can see, uh, it's the four-player version. Now, this did present a couple of interesting issues, um, and we'll, we'll get into that as we go. Uh, this game did come uh, preloaded with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Turtles in Time. Those are both the arcade versions. But you know what? It had two games on it. And we're thinking to ourselves, Surely we can do better than two games, right? Well, yeah, you're darn right we can. So we are going to be installing a RetroPie installation in this. So this will be the ultimate bake a pie, let me tell you. All right, so what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to save a little bit of time here. I, I, the arcade assembly, as far as the cabinet goes, uh, is pretty dull and boring. It's just basic stick it together like you could at Ikea. So I'm going to go ahead and get the cabinet itself installed. And then we'll go ahead and get to the technical stuff on this after I've got it all put together so you can see what we have to do to convert this. So hang tight one sec, and I'm going to get this thing put together. I'll be right back with you. Okay, guys, so um, as you can see, I'm actually in the process of uh, setting up the cabinet by itself. But uh, to save a little bit of time, I wanted to go ahead and show you this part so I won't have to pull it back off once we're mounted in the cabinet, okay? Um, what this is, is this is the actual LCD screen that's going to mount in the cabinet. As you can see, I haven't even pulled the stickers off of it yet. Um, this is the actual LCD controller, and this is the control cable that connects down to the computer that's actually mounted in the system. Um, we aren't going to need any of this. So what we're going to go ahead and do is if you, we're going to remove this. We're going to go ahead and we're going to remove this panel. And very gently, guys, it always makes me nervous when you're working with new LCDs because this thing is uh, uh, sitting flat on this box so we don't put any pressure on it. That's really the key. All right. We're going to go ahead and flip this over, and I'm going to show you what we're talking about here. All right, so as you can see, this is the LCD cable that actually connects up to the screen itself. We're going to go ahead and pull that out. All right. This is the actual power connection right here. We're going to go ahead and pull that out. And as you can see, the ground is actually on the back of this LCD. Now, we're going to have to reground that also since the ground went into this pin. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out. Now, it used to be that you would have to source your own ground wire. But in this particular case, I think I know right where I'm going to ground it to. On the new um, board that it came with, there was actually a grounding ring on there. So we're going to go ahead and use that. All right, guys. So these are the three wires we're going to need. None of this gets used at all. So this will end up getting pitched. All right, so hang tight. I'm going to finish getting her assembled. Be right back. Okay, guys, so I wanted to uh, show you. Uh, now, as you can see, we're, we're currently in the process of installing it. The cabinet is still empty in here. We don't have anything in here. Um, one of the things we're going to have to do is since the, uh, and I'll show you this too. Hold on one second. This is the actual control panel for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. And as you can see, you've got your joystick, a jump, attack, and you've got one button. Now, most people who know Raspberries know you need to have two. You need to start and a select for each person so that each individual player can jump in. Now, I thought about drilling it into this or possibly into this, but when I was doing the installation here, this is panel J when you install this. And as you can see, the controls will sit up on top of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill four holes right here, equal distance apart, and we're going to put our four colored buttons for the starts on each player. So let me go ahead and get these drilled, and then I'll get the buttons mounted, and I'll show you what it looks like. Hang tight. All right, guys, so here's what we've got. So 
I took the J panel, and as you can see, I put four equidistant uh, holes in here for the buttons. And you'll notice that I have purchased four buttons the colors of the turtles. Yeah, I know what you're wondering. Do I actually know who all of them are? Well, let's give it a shot, shall we? Everybody likes Raphael. Everybody, right? Am I right? That's what I thought. What about Michelangelo? Anybody? Wait, maybe somebody out there likes Leonardo or Donatello. Yes, I do actually know all the turtles. I was a huge fan. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to correspond these colors with the colors that are up there. And even though they're not quite the same, I think people will get the idea. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this put into place. And uh, I'm going to mount the switches in here. And then I'm going to set this in place so that we can go ahead and get started on the next part. Hang tight. Okay, guys, so... As you can see, here's our new panel with our buttons. And you can't see back there in the back, but this does actually correspond with all of our buttons back there. And if you look at the back, you can see that I've got all the switches mounted in a down position. That's going to make it a whole lot easier to access these from the other side uh, when I start plugging in the cabling. Which, by the way, the kits I got, there's no soldering involved. They're slide-on cables. So you can't go wrong with that. Pretty cool. Hang tight. We'll move to the next step. Okay guys, so now that we've got the, uh, the buttons mounted in there and the case is more or less assembled, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to modify the buttons and the, uh, the controllers that are actually inside of, uh, of, of this uh, control panel here. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over. Now, I'm going to let you know one other thing. Um, we're going to do a modification on this that allows us to um, adjust the volume with the Raspberry as well as turn it on and off with the Raspberry. Now, even with this modification, um, for some reason, the way they wired this, this is actually backwards. So on is off and off is on. So we're going to fix that too while we've got this apart. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. It's a pretty simple little setup. So, all right. So let's flip this over. And it looks like we've got um, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 screws to take out. Give us a second and we'll get these screws out. Hang tight. All right, guys. So... Now we've got the uh, the screws out of the bottom, and we're gonna I'm gonna try to leave this uh, film on top here until uh, uh, until we get to the end. So what I'm gonna do is there's a couple pieces of tape that are kind of stuck to the bottom. We want to make sure they don't stick. So let's go ahead and pull this top off, and let's see what we're looking at under here. All right, so it looks like everything is very nicely connected to this top. That's very convenient. And right, so we're gonna set the bottom down over here, and let's see what we've got to work with here. All right, so as you can see, all of the buttons are actually wired into this controller board right here. Uh, we are not going to be using this controller board. In fact, what we are actually going to be using are these controller boards right here. So it's going to replace those with these small controller boards. And as you can see, and I'll get a picture with Stumpy on these, they're a lot smaller. Now, you can actually put a uh, one USB uh, uh, decoder on each joystick and set of buttons if you want to, but this particular one is designed to actually use uh, two. So you can put two on each one of these. All right, and as you can see that the, uh, the pinouts are not super clear on this, but fortunately the instructions are. So we'll get to that here shortly. All right, so we're gonna set that over here and let's get the main decoder board disconnected and get these zip ties cut so that we can track this wiring. And we will be coming back to this here in a second. We want to make sure that we maintain all of the correct colors. And we want to make sure that we run one extra one and label it for the buttons that are actually up on the machine. That's going to be very important because one of these is going to be the start button and one will be the select button. That's a big deal. Um, for those who are wondering, the reason you need the select button, in a lot of the games that are actually arcade versions, uh, in order to put in coins, you have to have the select button. Also... To set a hotkey to get out of the games, you have to push the start and select at the same time to break you back to the main menu. So you have to have that button, no matter what it is. So you've got to have that on there. Hang tight one sec. Let's go ahead and get these uh, pulled and get this all clipped so we can work on it. Hang on. Okay, guys. So as you can see what we've got here, uh, we've clipped all of our wires free here, and they are more or less strung with each other. They're kind of color-coded, but kind of not. There's like, you know, yellows here, and but not really. Uh, the key is when you're hooking these up, it doesn't matter on the, uh, uh, the cards how you hook them up as long as all of them are connected the same way. And there are specific instructions. So we'll get to that. Um, this is the on-off switch that we were talking about, the toggle switch. Um, while we are here, we are going to want to go ahead and modify that real quick. Let me show you what you do here. You pull out these two screws right here. 
Then you can pull the switch itself out. Keeping in mind that this is the on off that we're looking for, okay? We'll put these right back here because we're going to use them again in a second. All right, so you pull your switch out and you flip it over. Now, as you can see, this is the switch that's on and off, okay? This is the one that's backwards. So it's real simple. You just take this out, trusty iFixit screwdriver here, <laughs> and we pull this out like so. And all we have to do is flip the switch around, just like that. Screw it back in place. That's all there is to it. Nothing else. Now, on is on and off is off, the way it should be. Put it back into place. And screw down these three screws again. Remember, guys, whatever you do, when you're putting these screws in, don't over-tighten this stuff. Uh, you, can, uh, you can strip this you know, particle board out real quickly if you do that. So... Just till it's snug, nothing more than that. All right, there we go. All right, now, these two wires are actually going to have to be run down so that we can access the volume and the, uh, and the power. So we'll get to that here in just a little bit. All right, so let's take a look at our board. Now, as you can see, you've got inputs for one player on one side, another player on another side, and then this is the actual USB uplink that's going to go down to the Raspberry, okay? So... Let's see, I think we have got some active hole. I'm going to mount that right about there for this player. And then perhaps I'll put the other one right here for that player. That'll be nice and even. Makes sense to me. All right, so I'm going to get some... Uh, there's no need to go crazy on this stuff. I'm going to use some really good double-sided tape for this just to hold this in place because it's not going to go anywhere once it's down. Hang tight one second, I'll show you. Okay, guys, so uh, this is industrial Velcro. This stuff is uh, probably a whole lot more overkill than we need, but it will do the job. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut a couple strips for the back of that, and this will Velcro it down to the actual back of this board. All right, so let's cut a piece of this off of here. And I've used this stuff to hang mailboxes before. This stuff is strong, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Okay. All you do is peel one side, stick it on, peel the other side, and it is there forever. Well, or until you forcibly remove, mechanically forcibly remove it. You've heard me use that term before. All right. But this has no weight to it, so it would. Uh, the odds of this moving are pretty darn low. All right, here we go. All right, so that's one in place. And let's go ahead and get this one wired up. I think that's a good idea. All right, now, the kit actually comes with a whole bunch of the, uh, the wires you can use for these pins. But since we're already wired over here and these are slide-ons, we'll probably try to use the existing pins if we can. Uh, if we can't, we will certainly go back to using these. So hang tight one sec. Let's see what we can do. Okay, guys, and just like that, we have one side wired up. Now, I'll tell you, I know by looking at Stumpy in this camera, this kind of looks like a wiring nightmare. Uh, it really isn't. The truth is, um, all of your negatives are jumpered together, going from button to button to controller, and they're all coming to the same point up here. These are actually going to be the grounds and the negatives for the two on the right-hand side for the two buttons for the selects. So that's what these are. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rinse and repeat it on this side over here. So, as you can see, it's all nice and clean, ready to go. And I'm going to get Stumpy focused over here. And I'm going to snap my fingers. And now we have the other side wired up. All right, so we've got both sides wired up correctly now. All of our grounds are in. Everything is wired identically on both sides. That's very important, guys. You want to make sure that your exact wiring here is exact wiring over here. Um, I don't know why that matters because, in theory... Uh, it wouldn't because you're going to be setting up these controls anyway, but everybody I've talked to said it absolutely does. So um, these wires here are the grounds and the connections that are going to be going to our buttons over there once we get it mounted. Uh, these are actually going to go out through that port at the top there, and then we're going to put uh, small jumpers on in order to connect them up to those. 
Um, these are actually going to be for our power switch and our volume, which are also going to go out through that hole. Uh, we're going to be adapting those once again also with jumpers um, after we're done testing and make sure everything works. So at this point, like I always say, guys, test, test, test. That's very important. So what we're going to do is now that we've got this totally assembled, I'm going to set this in place over here. And we're going to test all of the joysticks to make sure all of the buttons are correct and that they are all functioning. Um, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and put this entire unit back together, uh, running our wires out the front, put it in place, wire up our next set of buttons, and then uh, take the next step. So hang tight. I'll be right back with you. All right, guys. So uh, with all that tested, I went ahead. I put it up there. All of the controllers are now functioning and working. Uh, with the exception, of course, of the uh, the buttons for the select, which we'll be doing in a second. I've gone ahead and I've run the USB cables on the inside here uh, out to the side, and we're going to run these on the outside of the case as well. So we're going to go ahead and reassemble this case now from the back and then uh, continue on from the inside. So hang tight one sec. Let's see if I can get this thing put back together. Our next step is, all right, so you remember we pulled out the uh, factory control board that was actually in this, all right? Uh, what we're going to actually be installing is an LCD controller board. Now, I will send a, uh, or I will put a link, rather, of this uh, down in the description so that you guys can actually find it. Um, they're very inexpensive, and they're very easy to install. Well, let me show you what we're going to use here. Now, we're not using everything in this package. Now, what we got here is this is the actual control board, and as you can see, it's got the HDMI right here, along with DVI, VGA, and your audio input. Okay, now what we're going to end up doing is we're going to mount this board right about here. All right, and then what we're going to do is this board, the little daughter board here, as you can see, what it does is it actually allows you to adjust the settings, uh, the, uh, the brightness, uh, anything like that on the monitor itself, as well as turn it on and off. Okay, uh, we're not going to use that, but we are going to mount it inside the case as well. So let me show you what I got in mind here. So this is the actual cable that actually plugs into this board right here. All right. And what you're going to do is, as you can see, you can match it up. You see the red cables are actually over there on the, uh, the left-hand side on the camera here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out this adapter very gently, okay? And we're going to plug in this adapter right where that one came out in the exact same pinout fashion. All right, just like that. Now, this is the ground wire. Now, normally you need to source a place to put the ground wire. You can theoretically ground it here. Uh, but you can also ground it to the motherboard. And they do include, strangely enough, a screw. Now, this is a new thing. They did not have this little bolt and nut uh, the last time I did one of these conversions. So this is kind of a nice little thing that they added into this thing. All right, so we'll go ahead and put that through here. And we'll ground that bad boy out right there to the motherboard. All right, so that will effectively ground the board. One less thing we have to worry about. All right, now what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to mount this more or less where it was, but I'm going to use that same double-sided sticky tape that we used before. Uh, this industrial stuff, it's very, very heavy duty, and it's not going to just come off of there. This stuff, as you can see, takes quite a bit of force to get it apart. So we're going to go ahead and measure us out a piece here, and we'll cut some off for this job. And I wanted to mount this here for a couple of reasons. Um, the location of the Raspberry is also going to have to be something we're going to figure out where it's going to go. Um, the only thing that we have to be careful of is we've got to remember that when that uh, control panel is mounted here, uh, there's one hole that goes up in it, which means that the two HDMI cables, excuse me, the two USB cables have to come out here as well as the HDMI cable for the Raspberry. Um, on top of that, we're going to have these ground wires and these control wires for these buttons going back up through that hole. So we want to make sure it's accessible. All right, so let's go ahead and put this on here. All right, that is in no danger of ever coming off, guys. Uh, this little board, we'll go ahead and mount right there. Uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and use the existing mounting screw and just screw that in place. Hang on one sec. All right, there we go. So now we got those the buttons actually in place right here. All right, so. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test this thing. Um, I'm a little uh, apprehensive because of the way the wiring was on this particular uh, encoder board. So I want to make sure that everything works before we wire up the other side of the player. So 
what we're going to do uh, is we're going to use the existing power supply that actually came with the one up arcade and it will actually plug into this board all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get a raspberry prepped get an image on it get this plugged in get a raspberry plugged in and just fire the thing up dry and let's see what it does hang tight okay guys so here's what we've got um, as you can see i've got this very rudimentally plugged up here um, we've got power to the lcd as you can see it's actually on right now uh, we've got the raspberry down here in just a little generic case and i've got an image in there and what we're going to do is, this is the USB to the two controllers that we just hooked up. So we're going to go ahead and hook it up. Now, incidentally, for those who are wondering, on a Raspberry, the top right next to the LAN plug is always player one. So we want to plug that in right there. In theory, we can do player one and two off of that. We're going to find out in a minute. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the HDMI in for the Raspberry. And we're going to go ahead and power the Raspberry. Now... In theory, and Stumpy is going to be catching this, at least that's the, that's the hope over there, you should see some activity. Okay, the Raspberry's up. As you can see, this did blink and went green. So let's see what we're seeing on the front with Stumpy here. Come on, Stumpy. What we should see is the image coming up for the Raspberry, and that is exactly what we are seeing. Okay, this is very, very good news. That means that at least we know that the LCD board is functioning and is working normally. It looks like we may have to adjust the resolution internally, but we can certainly do that. Now, if you're wondering, we don't have sound right now because we don't have the audio connected to it. In theory, if I plug that in, we should have audio. In fact, we'll probably do that. So I'm going to back stump you up over here. And let him watch that right there. Okay, guys. So, as you can see, uh, what we've got is we've got the console is actually mounted now. And I'll try to give you a nice overview of that. We've got that protective layer taken off of it, by the way. Uh, it is currently bolted down. Uh, I have tested and configured all four of these controllers. Um, and I'll tell you. The next time I do this project, I actually considered mounting the Raspberry in this as well and then just running the cables out. But there was one reason I decided not to do it on this particular build. And that reason, and I will show you here, get a little closer to it, was this audio cable. It has to come down from the speakers to this uh, uh, decoder card, which uh, actually controls the LCD screen, the HDMI input, um, as well as the audio coming out of the Raspberry. So... Because of the distance on this, I didn't want to have to run a jumper in this. Although I will tell you, I may end up having to run a uh, 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 totally separate uh, amplifier on this for sound. Because we do get audio, but it's not very loud. And you know, kids are going to want something a little louder, so I may end up doing something like that in the future. All right. So, our next phase to go ahead and get this ready is, as you can see, we've got a bunch of cabling sitting right here. We want to go ahead and get this all cable tied up nicely in here. And we want to get the Raspberry mounted. And I'm thinking I'm going to mount the Raspberry right about here. And the reasoning for that is because we need to get a jumper. These are the wires from the, the volume control and from the power on the front there, that little switch. We want to be able to power the Raspberry from the front so we don't have to shut this whole thing down all the time. So I'm going to get this mounted and get this cleaned up a little bit, and then we'll be right back with you. Hang tight. Okay, guys, so let me show you what we got going here. So, as you can see, we've got all of our cabling installed. We've got our Raspberry right here secured. We've got, this is our LCD controller board. Now, what I've done is, and I'm going to bring the camera over here so I can show you. I've got a power strip actually attached to the side of the cabinet here. And this is the power supply that goes up to the LCD board and to the Raspberry. That way, we'll only have one cord running out of the bottom of the machine to actually feed the power in. Now, I did a couple of interesting things with this wiring. Uh, one of the things that I did, and I will actually put some detailed instructions down here, um, I wired the, the power button on the front there up to this Raspberry so that when you flip the switch, the power switch, it actually puts the Raspberry in standby mode and shuts the system down effectively. It's actually pretty cool. Um, now, one other thing that, that I have discovered, and uh, this was through trial and error, um, the audio on the, uh, the board here is actually that comes out of the Raspberry is not very loud. So while we do have audio going through these speakers, it's really, really low, 
and the volume uh, switch up there doesn't actually work. You can't control it like that. So what I did is I went ahead and I picked up a small amplifier, and I will show you what I got here. There we go. A small amplifier with a volume knob on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this amp is going to be powered on all the time and plugged into this power strip. Then what we're going to do is we're going to run the audio from the Raspberry. It's going to come down to here and then out from here up to the system. Now how are we going to do that? Well, this is the output from the board that is pulling the audio off of the HDMI. So what we're going to do is we're going to branch off a cable here. That cable is going to go to the audio input here. Then we're going to have another audio cable. We're going to have to create it that is going to go the left, right, and left and right here into back into this port. So the, the actual amp is going to sit right in this area. Now, the downside to this is they're not going to have a lot of control over the audio externally. Uh, the upside is there will be audi audible audio, which is a good thing. So, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted. We'll be right back with you, and I'll show you what it looks like. Hang tight. Okay, guys, so what I've done is, and I'm going to cable up this all pretty here in a second, but I've taken this amplifier, and as you can see, I ran this wire to here, junctioned it together, and then ran a wire back here, back up to the speakers. Okay, and as you can see, this is our plug going down. Now, I want to show you why I did this. So right now, it's at the minimum level. I want you to, I'm going to hopefully Stumpy will pick this up. Listen real carefully. I'm going to set you right on the thing here. So you can hear the audio, but just barely, and that's at maximum level. Now, if I adjust this knob a little bit, that's at about 10%. So, a very inexpensive, but absolutely necessary upgrade. So, what we're going to do is we're going to mount this down low like this, and we're going to have a cutout down here anyway to get to the uh, uh, the power cable and everything else, and that's where this is going to be is in that cutout, so they can still reach back here and adjust this volume. So hang tight one sec. I'm going to get this buttoned up. We'll be right back with you. All right, at this point, we've got our amplifier in and cabled up. We've got everything cable tied back here nicely, so it's not going to go anywhere. At this point, what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get the back on this, and then I'm going to go ahead and assemble the base. So we'll be right back with you, and I will show you what this uh, unit looks like all assembled, and we will test it out. Hang tight. And here we go, guys. The full Turtles machine in all its Turtles goodness. All right, so I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to take the power cable. By the way, the power cable is the only thing running out of the back of this thing. What we're going to do is I'm going to set Stumpy up right over here. And we're going to angle him up a bit. And let's plug this thing in and see if it comes on. Excuse the uh, cool spider webs. My daughter was decorating for Halloween, so... Yeah. <laughs> And here we go. Now, remember what I was telling you guys about the audio levels. So, it's on. Listen. But, we want a little more punch than that, right? So what you do is you reach your hand down here to the back of the machine, the amplifier. Yeah, now we're talking. All right, so I'll tell you what we're going to do, guys. Um, now that we know it's working, everything's perfect. As you can see, it looks great on this little stand there. We're going to play a couple games. Let's see what we can do on this thing. So I'm going to see if I can angle Stumpy to see the screen. And uh, hopefully I won't be directly in the way. That's what we're shooting for here. And I'm going to play on player one over here. All right. Let's go play the turtles. The whole reason we built it in the first place. What do you think? And let's play the uh, arcade version. Here we go. Now the way this is set up, guys, for all you who know a lot about RetroPie, um, 
this is always going to be player one. Leonardo will always be player one, which means you're starting to select to jump out of the games are only on this controller. Uh, while every other one has a select button, as you can see across the bottom here, those were actually add-ons, by the way. If, I don't know if I mentioned that or not. I hope I did. But I had to add these four buttons for the actual add coins here. So check this out. All right. You just you can't stop it. You just got it. All right. So let's go ahead and put a coin in here. And we're going to go ahead and play Leonardo. Here we go. Fire! I know they go. Yes, I'm dancing. <laughs> this has been a fun project, guys. I got to tell you, um, when we're done here and I'm done playing, I do want to show you, tell you a couple things that I figured out about this project. And as you can see, it runs just like the arcade version. I used to be pretty good at this way back in the day. All right, so to add extra coins, we'll go ahead and add one in here for Mikey. Let's bring him in. All right, there's Mikey. He's jumping, he's attacking, everything's good. Let's go ahead and bring in Donatello. There we go, and as you can see, he's jumping and attacking. And let's go ahead and add in Raf. And where's Raf? There he is. Let's put him over here. There we go, and we'll get on down. There's Raf. As you can see, he's jumping and attacking just as well. All right, guys, so just to show you what I was talking about with player one. So start and select right here will kick you back to the main menu. Okay, That's something to remember on RetroPie. You always have to have a hotkey set up in order to go back to the menus. All right. Now, the cool thing is that once you're in the menus, all joysticks and all buttons will actually work. But to break out of the menus, you actually, or to get out of a game, you actually have to use the blue. That's it. So let me shut this down. I'll tell you guys a couple things I learned about this. So um, now, it's something else I put on here that was pretty darn cool, guys. So right now, as you can see, the toggle switch, well, you probably can't see it with Stumpy, but it's in the on position. We hit the off position. The raspberry is actually going to sleep. So what that does is, since the raspberry is going to sleep, you don't have an HDMI input anymore. See? So your HDMI will now go to sleep. Therefore, you have the whole system off, but you don't have to unplug it every single time. All right. So once the Raspberry is in its total sleep mode, as soon as you hit that switch to on, Raspberry comes right back on again and reboots up. It's a pretty cool little function. That's the reason we did that wiring in there. So uh, a couple things I've learned about this project and things that you're going to want to know for sure. Number one, if you, if you do it yourself, you want to make sure that you have an amplifier, an audio amp, because the, amp, uh, the audio that comes off the Raspberry is not powerful enough to push these speakers with any real volume. It's real low. Uh, number two, you're going to want one controller card per controller. All right. Now I know you uh, when you when you saw me wear this up, uh, I actually had one controller card and one controller on each side. That ended up causing problems. It did function, but it didn't work a hundred percent. So, one controller per card, or excuse me, per joystick, and then all four of those USBs will go into the Raspberry. Uh, if you want to add a USB hub to the Raspberry so that you can add on a keyboard or something else in the future, you can. But that's the key. One card for every single joystick. You'll save yourself a lot of banging your head against the wall. Uh, beyond that, the uh, 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 LCD converter was wonderful. That board worked perfectly. I had no problems with that at all. So it was pretty cool. Well, hey, listen, guys. This is uh, You can probably tell the shirt has changed since we started this video. Uh, this has actually been a couple of day process because I've been learning as I've been going. Uh, so it actually, in all, it ended up taking me about, oh, I'd say about six hours to convert it. Uh, I suspect now that I know what I'm doing, it's going to go a whole lot faster on the next one. So I'll probably get one of these in here and have it for Christmas for people. So we shall see. Thank you guys for watching. This has been a fun video, very educational. And like I always tell you guys, if you want to do this kind of stuff, just do it. I mean, don't be afraid of the project. Just because you've never done it doesn't mean it can't be done. And there are a lot of resources out there and people that are willing to help you. So if you want to do the project, jump on it and knock it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great weekend, and I will see you on the next video. Catch you later.